Next stage with the um, papier-mâché bowl that's not made of papier-mâché but made of initially mod rock and here we go. So that I put three coats of the little layers of mod rock on and now I'm going to just pop that out, pull that out and there is a bowl beautifully smooth inside but unfortunately with a hole so we have to sort that out so first of all turn that over press that down and scissors put a few patches over that bit so we will just wet it i think we can actually wet that bit now too Three or four pieces on there. I will put a little bit at the inside as well so that it's nice and smooth for later stages of whatever we decide to do. I have to kind of wet it and move, move it around a bit. So the inside now looks like that and the outside looks like that but that needs it needs a foot although it could actually just stay like like that but it's not very stable so what I think I'll do is I'll put a, a rim on here so first of all what should I do should I cut it into bits here yeah, maybe my intention then was just to put one big piece on and squidge it by hand I'm going to have a go at dividing it into four lengths and wet them. So, and then kind of squidge it slightly like that and place it around here. Now, the idea is not to be mechanical and precise. So that's the sort of diameter I'm making, then it will just sit beautifully. And if I repeat that now, I'll do it three together. Can you see? That's it. Just wetting it like that. Thing is, I can always see the finished thing in my mind. And the journey there is often guesswork. And it's based on experience, I suppose that's the value of experience. And maybe that's the same with everything in life. We can see where we want to go and we trust our intuition, which is often based on experience. So as they overlap, they sort of create an extra bit there. So. Press it down. It's fabric really, isn't it? It's lovely. And just bring them to catch up there. And I think that might be all that's needed, but I I might be wrong, we'll see. So wet it and smooth it in. I'm just going to place it down and move it around to squash it so it's flat whilst it's still wet. Slide it off. I'm working on a glass table and that's what I've got at the bottom then, see? So not a great deal of height, but I might add, I might add some more when this is dried and build it up in layers because you could put quite a big one on. Now at the edge here, I think what I might do, 
So I could leave it like that. I rather like that sort of genuinely, this is how I am made look, rather than trim it off and make it into something more contrived. I like to see things just as they are, frays and holes and warts and all. I think that's rather lovely. So we'll leave that to dry for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going, what shall I do? Shall I put it like that maybe? Yeah, that's a perfect way to let it dry. Put it to one side and get on with the next stage. I'll show you some of the um, necklaces I've been making using the Tyvek beads because they are rather gorgeous. This one looks like enormously large Baroque beads. That one is one I found in a junk shop, which I just like. Um, I've got quite a few here. I'm wasting your time. Anyhow, I'm going to show you how they look in one of the galleries. I'll go down in a couple of days and take a film and, and show you because I'm particularly pleased with the large ones. And you can make the tiniest ones as well. And then, of course, earrings to go with them. I'll make, I'll make some bracelets as well. Okay, sorry about that, that was meant to be bowls, but it moved into jewellery. 